Okay, so I've graphed three functions for you here. These are called rational functions. Um, they're fractions, so 1 over x, 2 over x, and then you notice negative 1 over x has just been reflected, like the transformations we talked about yesterday. So my question for you is, what is the inverse graph of these functions? You can see the blue line is y equals x. So what would the inverses look like? Take a minute and think about that. You can talk in your groups. You can make a sketch, but we'll pause the video here for you to think about what the inverses will look like. Okay, so if I reflect the graph, this piece, oops, sorry, hang on. This piece right here will reflect to be on top of this piece. And this piece over here would reflect and be on top of this piece. So actually, the inverse will be the same exact graph as the original. Um, in one class, I mentioned this yesterday, and in one class, I didn't. So I'm going to do it now in the video. The symbol for inverse is the equation name, so the y, and then it's to the negative 1. And what that tells us is this this equation corresponds with this inverse. The same thing is true over here for 2 over x. The y inverse is itself 2 over x. And the same thing with negative 1. The inverse is itself. This only happens for a fraction or a it's called a rational function when there's no vertical shift at the end. Okay, so you can't do this if there's been changes, but for now, what the main idea I want you to get is that with no vertical shift, this kind of equation, it's called rational, has the inverse of itself. So with that in mind, let's algebraically find the inverses of these equations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take y equals 1 over x minus 4. Go ahead and write that down on some paper right now. We'll pause the video for, for you to write down 4 and 5. And I'm going to break apart the equation into the steps that were used to build it. So first we took x, and then it was x minus 4, and then it was 1 over the x minus 4. So going backwards for the inverse, we're going to go from here to here, and because we know that the inverse of a rational, we can make this step 1, one over x, going backwards, and then to go from this step to this step, we're going to add 4. So the inverse function is 1 over x plus 4. We can do the same thing for 5. If we have, we started with x, then we made it x plus 5, and then we made it 2 over x plus 5. To go backwards for the inverse, we're going to keep the numerator as 2, but that's over the denominator of the x. And then from there, we're going to subtract 5, so our inverse is 2 over x minus 5. So then for the other new material today before you take your quiz, and don't panic, this topic is not specifically on the quiz. Your quiz today covers Monday through yesterday, not today's new material. So find this page in your packet. We'll pause the video so that you can find it. And now we are going to determine the inverse function, sketch the graph, state the domain and range for the original function, and I'm going to modify the directions to make it say, and it's inverse function. So we're specifically going to talk about functions today. So for number four, x squared minus 1, that started as x, then we went x squared, and then we subtracted 1. So to go backwards for the inverse, we're going to add 1 and then square root. So the inverse function is going to be 
x plus 1 under a square root. Graphing these, to graph x squared minus 1, we've looked at quadratics a lot these first few days of school. So we know that it's a parabola shape. And with our transformations from yesterday, we know that it starts down 1. So that is right here. Now to get some other points, let's plug in a number. So let's plug in 2. When you plug in 2, we get 4 minus 1, which is 3. So I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to the point 2, 3. And then because it's symmetrical, I can get the point negative 2, 3. And here is x squared minus 1. Now for the square root of x plus 1 from our transformations from yesterday, this plus 1 means move to the left 1. So I'm going to start my graph here. Let's plug in a number. What's a nice number to square root? Ooh, I can square root 4 very easily. So what would x have to be to square root 4? 3. So when x is 3, the y value is going to be the square root of 4, which is 2. And I just thought I, another way you could do that, if you think about your points that we did for x squared minus 1, we did the point 2, 3. Because it's the inverse, you can switch your x and y, and now here's your point. So now if I connect the values, we have seen square root graphs. So you know that it just is that um, positive value part. The domain for the quadratic is all reals. The range is y is greater than or equal to negative. And now if we look at the graph of the square root, the domain is the x's, and there's no x values until we get to negative 1. So that's x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And the range is the y values. There's no y values until we get to 0. So that's y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, for number 5, we have 3x plus 2. So that was, we start with x, goes to 3x, and then we add 2. So going backwards, subtract 2, divide by 3, so that's going to be x minus 2 divided by 3. Now these are both lines. Um, I'm going to skip graphing them to get the domain and range because lines have domain and ranges of all real numbers. Okay, for number 6, we start with x, we go to x plus 3, and then we squared it. So to go backwards, we're going to square root x and then minus 3. So your inverse is the square root of x, subtract 3. Now to graph f of x, again it's the quadratic, it's the parabola shape, and it's been moved to the left 3. Right here. And then um, another point, let's plug in, um, let's plug in 0. That's a nice one. When you plug in 0, 3 squared is 9. Well, let's see if this grid goes up to 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Ugh, almost. All right, let's pick something different. Let's plug in negative 1. When we plug in negative 1, we get 4. All right, that's better here, here, and here is our x plus 3 squared. So now for the square root of x minus 3, we know that the minus 3 at the bottom moves it down 3. And then let's pick, um, let's plug in 4. 
because when we do that, we know that the square root of 4 is a nice number. So the square root of 4 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. Check that out. It's the reverse of the point over here. So I can plot 4, negative 1. There's our graph. So for a domain and range for the quadratic, we've got all reals for the domain and y is greater than or equal for the range. For the inverse function, the domain is x is greater than or equal to 0, and the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, and last but not least for the graphs, we've got x to the third. So we have x, and then that changes to x to the third. So to go backwards from x to the third, that's going to be the cube root, just like the backwards of an x squared is a square root. So our inverse function is a cube root. We graphed these um, earlier in the week. So the general shape is that S shape. If you plug in 0 to x to the third, you get 0. You plug in, let's plug in 2, we get 8. If I plug in negative 2, I get negative 8. So I get this really long S shape. And since it was 2, 8, to graph my inverse, I'm going to graph 8, 2. That's over here. And we also had negative 2, negative 8. So I'll go to negative 8, negative 2, 0, 0. And then we get a very shallow S shape. And the domain and range for all of these is all reals. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take our exit ticket or mini quiz. You're going to clear your desks. Um, the only thing you need is something to write with. Uh, pencil is ideal. When you are done, you can bring the quiz up to the teacher desk and then start on your homework, which is in your um, packet and listed there and also on your calendar.